Hello, I'm Jonah with Magnanimous Media, and this is the C500. The C500 is the pinnacle of Canon's Cinema EOS line. Its Super 35mm chip is the same used in the C300 and C100, but the C500's dual 3G SDI outputs uncompressed 4K RAW, as well as 2K in 12-bit and 10-bit RGB444. The C500 is capable of 120 frames per second in 2K and half 4K, meaning 4096 by 1080. Internally, the C500 functions exactly like the C300, shooting 1920 by 1080 in MXS 422 at 50 megabits per second and 420 at 35 megabits and 25 megabits per second to CF cards. The C500 is a straight up cinema camera. The data rate, resolution, and dynamic range are well within current standards for digital cinema cameras. In addition to that, it has excellent low light performance. You can use practicals in many situations that with other cameras would call for hotter lights. And to add to that, the noise that's generated by the sensor is much more organic. So in certain situations, with certain compositions, you can go at higher ISOs with more attractive noise. The build of the C500 can be kept pretty streamlined, which keeps the camera setup light, which means that you'll be able to keep up momentum on the set. The camera is available in both EF and PL mount. While PL mount remains the standard for cine glass, companies like Zeiss are making cine lenses in EF mount, not to mention the cine line from Canon, which is perfectly paired with the C500. Despite the need for a recorder to record 4K, you can streamline your setup with the C500 and keep it light for handheld use and for documentary use, though if you are using it for a documentary, you will want to beef up your data ranking. Uh, the camera is available in EF mount, so using lenses like Canon's L-Series is definitely an option, and those lenses are less expensive and lighter. The C500 can simultaneously record to the internal CF cards, and that can either be used as a high-quality backup or as proxies for editing. Although the C500 outputs log to the recorder, you can apply a couple of different loops to the monitor output, which means that you can have a more attractive image for a client monitor. When recording internally, you can apply any number of the available picture profiles to that footage. Normal one is typical contrast and saturation for a TV monitor. Normal two is similar, but highlights will clip faster. Normal 3 expands the tones in the shadows. Normal 4 is similar to 3, but retains more detail in the shadows. Cine 1 is meant to simulate film with a crisp and vivid image. Cine 2 is similar, but with less contrast. EOS Standard emulates the standard picture style of Canon EOS HD SLRs, such as the 5D, 60D, and 7D. Canon Log is flat and retains maximum detail for footage that is intended to be color graded. The lookup tables for Rec. 709 and YDR are the two profiles that can be applied to the monitor output on the C500. The sweet spot ISO for the C500 is 850, which is conveniently bracketed in the ISO menu. When you go above 850, your gamma will stay relatively in the middle of your dynamic range, so raising your ISO has no effect on gamma. The highest usable ISO is generally held at 3200, but again, because the noise is more organic on this camera, you may be able to crank it past 3200 and, depending on what's in your composition, maintain a usable image. Canon Cinema RAW can be compared to DPX, and in fact, most software will see it as DPX. The RMF is stored in image sequences with each clip representing one frame. Now, settings like ISO color balance are baked in, and the advantage of baking in settings like ISO at a sensor level is that the resulting image will have less noise in it. So the only thing that's left to do in post is debayer the image. Included with the C500 is the C500 body, the proprietary shoe mount monitor, shoe mount grip, one 64 gigabyte CF card, two batteries, battery charger, and AC adapter. The Gemini 444 includes the 444 recorder, two 3G SDI cables, PTAP cable, four pin XLR power adapter, DC power adapter, four 512 gigabyte solid state cards, an eSATA to USB 2.0 card reader, eSATA cable, an eSATA to USB 3.0 adapter, and stylus. The recorder will require a power supply, so ask us about options we provide. Canon provides XF plugins for Final Cut and Avid Media access, as well as XF utilities and loot downloads on their support page. 
you will require Final Cut 7.0.3 or above to ingest 720p footage in MXF. If utilizing the Gemini 444 recorder, you'll need to download the Gemini Clip Merger for merging 4K as well as some 2K and HD formats. Gemini transfer software will be required to convert 12-bit DPX to workable 16-bit. Consult the Gemini C500 support document to plan accordingly and calculate data expenditures. The top grip attaches to the cold shoe mount on the top of the camera body. The top grip has two cold shoe mounts for mounting accessories or the proprietary monitor. In order to utilize audio inputs and control, as well as functions like the waveform and vector scope, you'll need to attach the proprietary monitor. The monitor can be attached in a number of ways, with or without the hand grip attached. The monitor is attached with two cables to the EXT1 and EXT2 ports. Be sure to attach the cable labeled 1 to EXT1 and the cable labeled 2 to EXT2. The monitor can swivel and flip to give you options for monitor placement. The internal battery provides around two hours of shooting time per battery, depending on the power demands. Other power options are available for the C500 that tie into the power supply for the recorder. The C500 is available in both EF and PL mount. Now due to a number of failures with the C300 and hot swapping EF lenses, this camera now has a lens exchange button. You'll use this feature when swapping the lenses while the camera is still powered on. Simply press and hold the button until the camera goes to sleep. Swap the lenses and press the button again and the camera will wake up. The EF mount is very similar to a PL mount and it's important that you treat it like a PL mount. The lens will not actually rotate and lock into place when you're locking it onto the camera. So it's important that when removing and attaching the lens, you keep a hand on the lens whenever you loosen the locking ring. The primary menu is accessed by pressing the menu button on the rear of the camera or the monitor unit. You toggle the menu options using the select dial on the left side or joystick on the rear of the camera body or the monitor unit. Make selections by pressing the joystick or pressing the set button in the center of the select dial. Internally, the C500 utilizes up to two CF cards at a time, providing 2.5 hours of 50 megabit per second MXF HD per 64 gig card. To format the card, go to the other category in the main menu and select Initialize Media. The CF card in use can be switched via the slot select button next to the CS slots. The C500 can also store metadata to an SD card via the slot on the rear right side of the camera body. Settings such as ISO, shutter speed, white balance, and aperture are displayed in the lower left corner of the monitor and viewfinder, as well as displayed on the rear of the camera body under the viewfinder. You can use the function button to manipulate these settings. If you are using an EF lens with electronic aperture control, adjust the aperture using the lower control knob on the camera body. White balance can be set to daylight, tungsten, preset A, preset B, and degrees Kelvin. To set the preset, simply set to A or B and press the white balance button while aimed at a white card. To set degrees Kelvin, Select that setting using the function button, then press the white balance button and use the select dial or joystick to dial in the desired setting. ISO or gain selection and increments, iris increments and zoom compensation, and shutter mode and increment can be adjusted in the main menu under camera setup. Image control, exposure assist, and focus assist can be activated and deactivated from the left side of the camera body. The C500 has magnification, peaking, zebra, waveform, and vector scope. In addition to peaking and magnification, the C500 also has an edge monitor focus assist found on the monitor unit. Settings for zebra and peaking can be found in the main menu under LCD viewfinder setup. Viewing options for the waveform monitor can be found under the other functions submenu. The numbered buttons on the camera body and monitor unit can be customized in the main menu under other functions and assigned button. Neutral density filters can be toggled via the controls on the front of the camera body. The C500 has 0.6, 1.2, and 1.8 ND, which provide two, four, and six stops of light reduction. All current settings can be viewed by pressing the status button and using the select dial or joystick to toggle through the displays. Exit this by pressing the status button again. The start stop or record button is located on the left rear and front right of the camera body, as well as the monitor unit. Under the monitor, you'll find the audio controls for the two inputs. The three pin XLR inputs are found on the right side of the monitor unit. To adjust audio settings, go to audio setup in the main menu. In order to record 4K, 2K, and HD in RGB444, you must utilize the dual 3G SDI outputs. Remove the dust cover to access these outputs. In the main menu, under 4K, 2K, you'll need to activate the 3G SDI output. You'll set output settings for 4K and 2K and internal recording within the 4K, 2K menu. System priority sets the format for output. Then you can specify settings in the appropriate 4K, 2K, or MXF menus. Options within or access to the 4K, 2K, and MXF menus change depending on the selected priority. The frame rate in the menus represent the time base for recording and not necessarily the recording speed. Check the C500 support for your recorder before planning formats and frame rates. 
4K can be output in RAW at 4096 by 2160 in Quad HD, or half RAW at 4096 by 1080 or 3840 by 1080. In 2K, the camera can output 12-bit RGB444 and 10-bit RGB444, or YCC422 at 2048 by 1080 and 1920 by 1080. The MXF menu sets data rate and resolution for internal recording. If using MXF in Relay Record as a backup or proxies, you will only be able to set data rate and resolution. To activate and set up Relay Record, go to the Set CF Card Slot menu. Relay Record will activate simultaneous recording. Double Slot Record will activate redundant recording to the second CF card slot. Also, be sure to activate the Record Command function, which will trigger the external recorder as well as MXF recording via the Start-Stop buttons on the camera. Recorders with support for Canon Cinema RAW should support triggering, but be sure that the recorder has the function activated as well. If you are simultaneously recording MXF for proxies, be sure to set the resize MXF output to determine the handling of aspect ratio in the conversion to 1080. Also ensure that your recorder receives file name and time code to facilitate conforming and post. Lookup tables can be applied to the monitor output via the monitor 1 and 2 menu. Also within this menu are settings for output resolution, resizing, and scan mode. For high speed or time lapse, access the special record menu and specify the desired record mode. You can under or over crank and set up time lapse and frame record. After activating a mode, specify settings for these modes in the appropriate menu. The C500 can output up to 120 frames per second in 2K and 4K half raw, but support for these modes is limited. If applying these settings, be sure that the recorder supports the format you intend to use. One available recorder for recording 4K raw, as well as 2K 12 bit, is the Gemini 444. The Gemini 444 recorder supports 4K RAW and half RAW, as well as 10 and 12 bit 2K in HD in RGB 444 and 422 DPX. Planned updates will unlock support for different frame rates and C500 support, so consult Convergent Design's C500 support document for current frame rate options. Some modes are only available with two recorders, so keep this in mind when planning your shoot. You should keep in mind that the data rates associated with this camera and recorder are massive. You can record over a terabyte in one sitting. It's therefore important that you reference the data rates so that you can plan your data wrangling accordingly. Thunderbolt is certainly the fastest solution, but USB 3.0 and eSATA are also available. If you're running this camera and recorder from us, you should contact us about our solutions before you estimate your wrangling time. You'll want to start by mounting the recorder. When mounting the recorder, keep in mind that the card slots do not lock, so they will either need to be held upright or secured with camera tape. The Gemini 444 can be powered by a number of means, but we prefer using a P-tap and gold mount. The Gemini 444 does not have an on and off switch. You power it on by simply plugging it in. To power cycle the Gemini 444, you simply unplug it and then plug it back in. The Gemini 444 has a touchscreen for manipulating settings. Use the provided stylus to interact with the Gemini 444's touchscreen menu. The lower portion of the screen will display voltage and temperature, input format, trigger mode, time code, record and playback mode, output mode, and available media record time. Select these settings with the stylus to expand. Playback mode requires that the recorder be in the appropriate mode for the clip's format. Menu will access the Gemini settings. SSD info will expand information on SSD capacity, and metadata will expand information on metadata, such as real name, scene, take, day, camera, and project. Press the back arrow to hide these menus. The hide button will hide menus from view. Tap the screen again to reveal them. Setup project will give you options for time base. The simplest method is to set this to follow input, which will conform to the frame rate being output by the C500. Setup mode will give you the option to record DPX, Airy RAW, 3D DPX for dual cameras, and Canon RAW. Use DPX for 2K and HD recording, and Canon RAW for recording 4K. If you switch modes, the Gemini will need to be reset to activate the setting. Additionally, interrupting the input or changing the output from the camera will likely require a restart in order for the recorder to function properly. The record menu allows you to set trigger for record button, camera trigger, remote trigger, or timecode trigger. Additionally, you can set clip name and special record functions. The special record function may not be available depending on the format of the input. The inputs menu contains settings for audio input and timecode source settings. The outputs menu sets record tally and mode. 444 requires the use of both outputs, but a 422 signal can be carried over a single SDI cable. Nearly an hour of 4K RAW 
and an hour and a half of 2K or HD can be recorded when utilizing two 512GB Convergent Design SSDs. The trays do not lock, so you may need to use camera tape to secure them. The cards can be removed without ejecting them, but be sure not to remove the cards during recording or finalizing of a clip. When the card is inserted into the recorder, it will show an orange LED while it attempts to recognize the card. Once it recognizes the card, it will show a green LED. If the card cannot be recognized or recorded to, a yellow light will show. A central green LED will activate when the Gemini 444 is ready to record. In some cases, the Gemini 444 will get stuck in a loop trying to recognize one of the cards. If this happens, simply power it down, remove the card, power it back up, reinsert the card, and format it. Two cards are required for recording 4K RAW and some 2K modes. The Gemini 444 records to two cards by stripping, meaning that it places one frame on one card and the next on the other card, and so forth. The clips can be combined in post by means of the Gemini Clip Merger software. When shooting in a mode that requires stripping, it is wise not to combine modes that record to a single card. You may receive a message reading mismatched SSDs for raid record or play. This likely means that the cards have mismatched footage and is not compatible with the record mode that the Gemini is in. Simply format the cards to resolve this. To format the cards, go to Gemini SSDs. It may take a minute or longer for the recorder to format a single card. The Gemini 444 will display three LEDs when recording and finalizing clips. If overcranking, the Gemini should be set to maintain the correct time base, but record the higher frame rate. After you've set up the camera to overcrank, go to Setup, Project, Frame Rate, and dictate the appropriate frame rate. Check the input to confirm the correct time base is being used. So that's the basic setup for the C500. Certainly a great cinema camera offers an excellent image and great low light. For more videos and tutorials, check us out at magnanimous.biz.